Hi, it's Katrina. From enormous fish with metal armor to giant millipedes from a sci-fi movie, here are 10 creatures that lived before the dinosaurs. Number 10. Ophiacodon the Ophiacodon is an extinct genus of synapsids that lived from roughly 306 to 280 million years ago during the late Carboniferous and early Permian periods in what is now the US, Nova Scotia, and England. It's closely related to the evolutionary line of creatures that the earliest mammals emerged from. Its name means snake tooth. They were larger than most other tetrapods of the day. This creature had the longest skull of any early synapsid, measuring up to 20 inches long, and which was filled with many small teeth. There were various species which ranged in size from 5.2 to 9.8 feet long, and weighed between 57 and 507 pounds, which is quite the range. While different species may have varied in size, it might be because the fossils are of different life stages. Some scientists believe that the Ophiocodon most likely lived primarily on land, but was possibly semi-aquatic, while others think it spent most of its life in the water. Its diet was omnivorous and included small fish, insects, other critters, and vegetation. Number 9. Gorgonopsid Before the dinosaurs came along, the Gorgonopsid was the world's top predator. These guys were a suborder of therapsids and used to be called mammal-like reptiles. So imagine that plus huge saber-like teeth. Definitely a carnivore. They are the ancestors of the earliest mammals and their closest relatives. It evolved during the middle of the Permian period from a reptile-like animal. There were over 30 genres of Gorgonopsians, all of which are now extinct. They existed at a time when today's seven continents were joined together as the single landmass Pangaea. While most known Gorgonopsid remains were discovered in South Africa, they've also been found in China and Russia. In 1998, a five-person team was searching on a mile-high plateau in South Africa's Karoo region when Roger Smith from the South African Museum and Peter Ward, a professor from the University of Washington, came across a small bone fragment jutting out. As they excavated the site from the last Permian period, they uncovered a complete skeleton of a Gorgonopsid. Museum scientists rate the discovery as one of the most important paleontological finds in South Africa this century. In over 150 years of collecting in the Karoo region, one of the richest fossil beds on Earth, this is the first complete Gorgon skeleton found. Early Gorgonopsians were no larger than a dog, but by the end of the Permian they became much bigger, with the largest known as Inostrancivia, being nearly the size of a modern-day rhinoceros, and some skulls measuring 1.6 feet long. When the Dinocephalians went extinct around 260 million years ago, the Gorgonopsid became the apex predator of the day. Its long legs and sharp interlocking serrated teeth helped it supersede other creatures as the world's fiercest hunter. A hungry pack of silocops that were discovered show the Gorgonopsid's nip and swallow technique. They had a saber-toothed bite and gulped down meat as quickly as possible instead of chewing. For a killing bite, they would slam down their saber teeth to create deep wounds that were hard to recover from. But nothing could save the Gorgonopsid or most other creatures from the end Permian extinction event, which wiped out nearly all life on Earth roughly 252 million years ago. It was the most severe extinction event known to have occurred and eradicated roughly 70% of terrestrial land species. Interestingly enough, it was the only theriodont line to be terminated by the mass extinction. And now for number 8, but first, big shout out to Marie N. O'Driscoll, so glad you love the new intro, and Kim Irish Sison, who also loves the intro and the videos, and requested a shout out, so here it is, ask and you shall receive. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join us, we'd love to have you. Number 8, Haiku Ichthys. So if we are going to talk about creatures that existed before the dinosaurs, just a heads up, they were pretty weird. Haiku ichthys is an extinct genus of early fish-like craniate. These kinds of animals had nodochords, which are flexible rods made out of a material similar to cartilage and a distinctly shaped head. They were pretty small, only about one inch long, and lived in the shallow Asian seas roughly 525 million years ago. A holotype was found near Haiku at Erkeikun in Yunnan, China, hence its name. 
While the Cambrian period saw an explosion of bizarre invertebrate species, the period was also characterized by the evolution of the first almost invertebrate marine-like organisms, including the haiku ichthys. Whether the species qualified as a primitive fish remains a matter of debate. The haiku ichthys weighed less than an ounce, and scientists are still arguing if it had either a primitive cartilaginous skeletal rod, the notochord, or a true backbone. Researchers are unsure which due to a lack of definitive fossil evidence. That seems to happen a lot. The haiku ichthys and similar species introduced characteristics into the animal kingdom that are rather commonplace today, including a head that is distinct from the tail and being bilaterally symmetric. But back then, it was pretty unique before they took over. Number 7. Cynognathus The Cynognathus was also from the order known as Therapsids, meaning it was a distant relative of early mammals. It was the size of a modern-day wolf with a big head that was about one foot in length. This big head helped accommodate its long jaws lined with sharp teeth, which it used for preying on and devouring small herbivores while hunting in packs. It is known from a single species, Cynognathus crateronotus, but it may hold the record for the number of different genus and species names it has had since it was first discovered in the 19th century. Here are some examples. Its front legs sprawled outward like a reptile, but its back legs were underneath it, making it walk more like a mammal, and apparently it could run pretty fast. They lived in the southern hemisphere landmass known as Gondwana, the southern half of Pangaea. Fossils have also been found in the famous Karoo region of South Africa. Most of the creature's known remains were discovered in modern-day Africa and South America. It lived between 251 and 245.9 million years ago and died out just as the first dinosaurs appeared and Gondwana began to move into drier latitudes. The earliest mammals emerged roughly 200 million years ago, about 46 million years after the Cynognathus went extinct. Number 6. Arthropleura Just like something out of a sci-fi movie, the giant millipede Arthropleura is the largest known land bug of all time. Its name is Greek for jointed ribs because of the creature's 30 jointed segments. This genus of extinct millipedes lived in Pangaea between 315 and 299 million years ago, during the Carboniferous period in what is now North America and Europe. Except that at that time, it was covered in hot and humid swamps with lush vegetation. The ratio of pairs of legs to body segments was approximately 8 to 6, similar to some present-day millipedes. The largest Arthropleura species, A. armata, was the largest terrestrial invertebrate of all time and grew to at least 6.6 .6 feet long. Ancient Arthropleura grew much longer and bigger than modern arthropods because they didn't have as many predators and because Earth's atmosphere had a greater amount of oxygen, 30 to 35 percent, whereas now it's about 21 percent free oxygen. Nobody has found a complete fossilized Arthropleura, just fragments of individual segments or plates. Scientists believe Arthropleura was an herbivorous arthropod rather than a predator, but aren't entirely sure due to a lack of preserved fossilized remains of the animal's mouth. Arthropleura's days on Earth ended at the end of the Carboniferous period, when the drying climate reduced the planet's rainforests and the desert-like characteristics of the upcoming Permian period set in. That's kind of good because I don't know about you, but I don't want to risk running into a six-foot millipede. I had enough to worry about. Number 5. Dimetrodon At first glance, the sail-backed Dimetrodon certainly resembles a dinosaur, but in reality, it wasn't even a reptile. It was an extinct genus of synapsids that lived during the early Permian period, from 295 to 272 million years ago. While the Dimetrodon is commonly mistaken for a dinosaur, it died out roughly 40 million years before the dinosaurs even appeared, and it was more closely related to mammals than reptiles. Weird, huh? Over a dozen species of them have been found, which walked on four legs and had a series of elongated spines protruding from their vertebrae, along with a curved skull equipped with large but differently sized teeth. It had canines in the front of its snout and shearing teeth in the back for grinding tough muscle and bone. It most likely feasted on four-legged land creatures known as tetrapods, including reptiles and enormous amphibians, and was probably an apex predator during its time on Earth. Dimetrodons were the first known land predators to feed on their prey using serrated teeth. 
They existed on the supercontinent Pangaea, primarily in what is now the southwestern United States. Most fossils were discovered in an area of Texas and Oklahoma called the Red Beds, and a few were also found in Germany. Its giant sail was probably some sort of temperature-regulating device used to soak up sunlight during the day and release the heat at night. It also may have been used to impress females. The largest species of Dimetrodon measured up to 15 feet long and constituted some of the largest predators of the early Permian, along with other Dimetrodon species. Number 4. Dunkleosteus From 358 million to 382 million years ago, the Dunkleosteus ruled the world's oceans as possibly the world's first apex predator. About 100 million years before the dinosaurs, this genus of armored-jawed fish swam the Earth's waterways during the late Devonian period. There were at least 10 species, which grew up to 33 feet long and weighed several tons. It was one of, if not the greatest, sea monster of its day. The Dunkleosteus had a bite force of up to 1,110 pounds of force, greater than the T-Rex, but they didn't have real teeth. Its skull was made up of bony plates that extended into fangs that scraped together, continuously sharpening each other. As adults, the jaws would get longer and stronger and more powerful by the minute. They would eat fish, sharks, and each other. The only thing able to pierce through their armor was another Dunkleosteus. So what happened to this giant, powerful monster of the sea? It was wiped out during the mass extinction event known as the Devonian Extinction, a time when there were no large land animals and when somewhere between 79 and 87 percent of all species went extinct. One prevailing theory as to the cause of this mass extinction, proposed by Thomas Algeo of the University of Cincinnati, holds that when non-vascular plants emerged on land, they released nutrients and minerals, which were washed into the sea and caused microscopic algae to rapidly multiply. Known as the Hangenberg event, bacteria used oxygen to break down the algae, which resulted in oxygen-depleted marine regions known as anoxic zones, where animals were unable to breathe. These anoxic zones forced creatures into confined areas where oxygen was more available, but where many struggled and ultimately went extinct. Algeo's theory doesn't fully explain the Devonian extinction, especially because several oxygen-dependent animals did survive the ordeal. Perhaps the Dunkleosteus was just so big that it was outcompeted by smaller, sleeker fish and sharks. Other evidence shows that sulfuric gases may have contaminated the ocean as a result of the emergence of vascular plants on land, and this may have also contributed to the extinction event. Number 3. Estemenosuchus Estemenosuchus is Greek for crowned crocodile and is an extinct genus of large herbivorous or omnivorous early therapsids that roamed the earth during the Middle Permian period, around 267 million years ago. There were two known species, both of which came from where the modern-day city of Perm, Russia, is located. Its body reached 10 to 13 feet long, and it had a double set of antler-like stubs protruding from its cheeks, along with a row of small peg-like teeth accompanied by sharp incisors and long canines. The Estemenosuchus' body was bovine-like, but with uncharacteristically short limbs. As scary as it sounds, this creature was most likely not very dangerous to other animals. It probably used its teeth for chewing vegetation, and the bony knots on its head were likely employed as a defense mechanism against predators. While scientists haven't ruled out the possibility that the Estemenosuchus ate meat, they believe it was primarily a plant eater due to its large size, which is customary among herbivores as a way to accommodate the proper digestive equipment. Number 2. Cotalorhynchus The extinct Cotalorhynchus was a large synapsid that lived during the early Permian period in what is now Oklahoma and Texas, in the southern United States. It was possibly aquatic, but is also known as perhaps one of the largest terrestrial vertebrates of its time. This heavily built creature had a barrel-shaped body that reached up to 18 feet long, with a disproportionately small head not much larger than an average human's. It was much larger than other known predators, including the Dimetrodon that I just told you about. It was about twice its size. However, it was relatively defenseless due to its short limbs and slow gait. Like the Estemenosuchus, the Cotalorhynchus was plump because of its large digestive organs, which were designed to gain the maximum nutritional benefits from its plant-based diet. Because it was an herbivore, its sense of smell was highly developed to help it find food sources 
resources that were not in plain sight. The creature's broad shoulders, powerful muscles, and dexterous limbs enabled it to efficiently dig for food. Number 1. Erythrosuchus Erythrosuchus emerged shortly after the Permian extinction event that occurred roughly 252 million years ago. This prehistoric hypercarnivore's name means red crocodile. It grew up to 16 feet long and was an apex predator. It was actually the largest predator in South Africa during the Middle Triassic period. Its fossilized remains have been discovered in Russia and South Africa. The earliest genus of Erythrosuchus, known as Garjania, appeared between 251 and 247 million years ago, about 4 million years before the first dinosaurs walked the Earth. Richard Butler of the University of Birmingham and his colleagues recently conducted a study which shows that the Erythrosuchus' head was longer than previously thought, accounting for up to one quarter of the creature's total length. This means it had one of the largest heads of any known reptiles. Its diet was almost exclusively composed of meat, and its large head may have assisted it with capturing prey. Scientists are unsure how the creature's bizarre proportions affected its movement, however, but they imagine it had extremely strong neck muscles, which were used for supporting its head. Thanks for watching! Which creature did you think was the weirdest? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!